You're listening to Do This First, a daily personal development podcast that focuses on science-backed, actionable stuff towards your best year ever. I'm Santa, your host. Yesterday, we spoke about a 65-year-old tool that has helped everyone from scientists to movie producers achieve success. The Jungian archetypes, we unpack the innocent the orphan, and the warrior archetypes. Today, we're talking about the next three, which are the caregiver, the seeker, and the lover. It's important to note that there's not one archetype that is better than the other. They all have strengths and areas of growth. As scientist Madame Marie Curie once famously said, nothing in life is to be feared. It is only to be understood. That applies here. We'll start with the caregiver. The caregiver is someone who loves to help others, always putting their needs before their own. They are kind, generous, and always willing to lend a helping hand. However, sometimes this can be too focused on helping others and forget to take care of themselves. Caregivers are the ones who take care of children, they help those in need, and they work to make sure everyone is healthy and happy. They don't like selfishness and always try to do what's best for others. On the flip side, or the shadow side, the caregiver can sometimes become a martyr, constantly sacrificing themselves for others and making others feel guilty. They may use their caring nature to control or manipulate others or become too dependent on taking care of people. It's important for caregivers to remember to take care of themselves too and not let their desire to help others become harmful to themselves. As a leader, the best way to manage a worker with the caregiver Jungian archetype is to recognize and appreciate their nurturing nature and desire to help others. Caregivers excel in roles where they can support and care for those around them, making them valuable assets on any team. To effectively manage a caregiver worker, it's important to provide them with opportunities to utilize their empathetic skills, such as assigning them to tasks that involve supporting their colleagues or clients. It is even more important to make sure the caregiver's workload is within means as they do tend to overwork and neglect themselves, which can lead to burnout. Underscore the importance of scheduled breaks and reasonable work hours. If their work starts to slip, it might be a sign that there is too much on their plate. You can have a conversation with them and observe their work output as the team moves forward. It may make sense to delegate a few of their tasks to someone else while reassuring them of their importance to the team and organization. If your company offers wellness or health benefits, make sure those are highlighted in a newsletter, a team meeting, or in a check-in framed in a very general context. If a loved one or someone in your inner circle is a caregiver archetype, you must be aware of a delicate balance between concern and codependency or enabling. At their extreme worst, the caregiver can guilt those they help and assume the role of martyr. As someone who has genuine concern for the caregiver, you can point out that they are working too many hours, not eating enough, and generally speaking, not taking care of themselves. Understand that it is ultimately in the hands of the caregiver to correct these detrimental habits. You do not want to place yourself in a situation unwittingly where you become the crutch or enabler unless you have consciously made the decision to do so for your own reasons. Do point out the areas that the caregiver is neglecting themselves in and share ways they can correct the issues. The second archetype we're going to look at is the seeker archetype. The seeker is someone who loves to explore new things and go on adventures. They are independent and they like to do things on their own. Seekers are always looking for ways to make their lives better, but sometimes they forget that they already have everything they need inside of them. They are determined and don't like to rely on others for help. Seekers keep pushing forward until they reach their goals and discover who they truly are. Their shadow 
is that seekers can sometimes become perfectionists. They are always trying to be the best and find the perfect solution to every problem. They might spend a lot of time trying to improve themselves, but never feel satisfied with their progress. They have a natural aversion towards conformity and will run from it. This includes jobs or careers that are not challenging and relationships that have grown stale. At their very worst, the seeker is self-centered and addicted to independence. They are unable to commit and will often feel lonely, alienated, and disappointed with life. As a leader, the best way to manage the seeker archetype is by enlisting their help on innovative groundbreaking projects. They seek adventure and the new, so to speak, and will be entertained with the novelty of contributing to something fresh and exciting. Generally speaking, they are not long distance runners. The projects should be short or have multiple phases to advance to. Asking periodically how things are coming along and how they feel about their work is key. The seeker is best in a supportive role, lending expertise and sharing research. They do have a tendency of losing interest unless it is fast paced and evolving. The leadership role in executive management is probably not the best fit. A couple of roles that are traditionally best geared towards the seeker archetype are positions in academia, such as professors or researchers, which can provide ample opportunities for intellectual stimulation and the pursuit of new ideas. Careers in journalism, writing, and investigation as well. If you have the seeker archetype in your inner circle, the best way to manage that relationship is by fostering an environment of encouragement and support for their insatiable curiosity and thirst for knowledge. Recognize that the seeker thrives on exploration and discovery, so provide opportunities for them to engage in research projects, attend workshops, or pursue further education. You guys can do this together. Encourage open communication and dialogue as they are likely to have a multitude of questions and ideas they wish to share. Additionally, be patient with their tendency to constantly seek new information and experiences as it is essential to their growth and development. By understanding and nurturing the seeker's unique qualities, you can harness their drive for learning and innovation towards achieving shared goals. The last archetype we're going to look at today is the lover. The lover is all about love in all its forms, like the love between parents and kids, friends, or even a spiritual connection. But when we think of the lover, we usually think of romantic love. It can be super exciting and fun, but it can also be really tough sometimes. The lover helps us feel happy, get close to someone, make promises, and follow our dreams. The lover is always looking for that perfect love and connection like a match made in heaven. They show how much they care by putting a lot of energy and effort into their relationships. They're scared of being alone or losing the love they found, so they work hard to keep their relationship strong. But there's also a darker side to the lover. Some people might try to distract others from their goals using love to get what they want. If you love me, you'll do blank, blank, blank. They may become so obsessed with love that they can't say no. And when things don't work out, they might feel totally crushed. And at its very worst, they may have intimacy problems and addictions. In a professional setting, at its best, the lover archetype person is best suited for roles that require strong interpersonal skills, emotional intelligence, and the ability to build and maintain relationships. They excel in positions that involve collaboration, teamwork, and communication with others. The lover archetype person is often seen as empathetic, compassionate, and supportive, making them well-suited for roles in counseling, human resources, customer service, or any other field where understanding and connecting with people is essential. Their passion and enthusiasm can also make them effective leaders who inspire and motivate their team members. 
Ultimately, the lover archetype person thrives in environments where they can bring warmth, harmony, and a sense of connection to their work. The best way to manage relationships with the lover archetype in your inner circle is by being open and honest with them about your feelings and needs. The lover archetype thrives on deep emotional connections and may be sensitive to any perceived lack of attention or affection. By communicating openly and showing appreciation for their passion and creativity, you can strengthen the bond with the lover archetype in your inner circle. Additionally, allowing them space to express their emotions freely and supporting their romantic pursuits can help them feel valued and understood. Overall, nurturing a supportive and loving environment is key to a relationship with the lover archetype in your circle. If you like what you're hearing, don't forget to leave a review, follow, and subscribe. You can also read a transcript of this podcast on my blog, to this Life. Tomorrow, we'll unpack the next three Jungian archetypes and how to manage those relationships personally and professionally. Until tomorrow. Moving past the rain, moving past the pain. Champion in you